Hello and welcome to the Signal Traders Group. Our website is blog.signaltraders.com where we put together effective video technical analysis trading plans on a daily basis. Have a little card team for you to look at talking about the importance of preparing for a bad time, for the winter, for hibernation. And it's one thing that's important about trading is that you may have a great period like this March to uh, January run-up that we just had, but as we're consolidating here in March of 2010, you need to make sure that you've stored some savings, some profits from the past to help you get through this, uh, you know, consolidation period of time. So, you've uh, hopefully you clicked on this video to uh, kind of learn about how to trade channels and the benefits of using trade uh, channels in, in, in your trading. As we have a little example here of uh, Bulger Bear for you. But, the, you know, so the first question is going to be, what are they? And basically, a channel or an envelope, as some call them, um, help us to determine when the market has reached an undervalued and overvalued uh, level. Looking at our example over here to the side, we've got two parallel lines. Usually, they're above or below a moving average. And just simply looking at our picture here, we can see that when we're at the bottom, that's considered an oversold area or undervalued. And then when we reach the top of the line, that is considered an overvalued and an overbought area. There are basically two different types of channels. The most traditional one is, as we just saw, is straight lines, uh, usually connecting highs and lows. And then we have what are considered to be standard deviations. And um, there are variations of that. As you can see here, we have a little bit of combination of both. So let's start off with talking about straight channels. Again, many of us know these as trend lines. Um, they stay a consistent distance away from the moving average. Um, they also provide a steadier price as far as targets. We we're going to go from the bottom, and our target is get to get up to the top. And if we're selling at the top, our target is to get to the bottom. And then we get breakouts above and below the trend lines. A lot of times they're considered best for futures traders and stocks because they're good for um, the less volatile time. When you think about a traditional straight channel line, um, again, the, it's the area that is in between those two uh, parallel line, trend lines is what consists of the channel. Many times we use the upper trend line t by connecting the highs, the close of highs, and we use the lows to draw the lower trend line. So in our little example here, we can see in the ascending that is angling up to the right. Again, we're connecting high points. And on the descending, as the highs get lower, we're connecting those. And in a channeling stock that's going horizontal, again, we are still connecting the highs and the lows. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and take some time and try to draw some of these straight channel trend lines. So I have the S&P 500 up here, the SPX, and we're looking at basically April of last year up till now. We know that the true low was March, but just, you know, again, we're just going to eyeball it. Now, the thing about channels and the thing about trend lines is it's more art than it is science. And so as I click the low here, I'm just going to kind of come up here and find the next one and see where things are touching. Some people go with wicks, some people go with actual candles, whatever floats your boat. This looks pretty good. You can see I've got a touch here, I've got a touch here. So I'm just going to extend it out with those touches. And there's my bottom connecting the higher lows. Now to draw the top, you have to kind of play around with it a little bit. I'm going to go with this high here. And if you see as I go up here that this really is not going to help me too much. So as I go with the art of uh, trend lines in the channel, I'm going to connect up these higher highs right here to draw right there. Now, one thing that you're going to notice, and I'm going to blow it up here. First thing you're going to notice is that we really don't have the trend line, the channel established until we have the low here, until we have and a low here. So that's really three, four months. And we have all these higher highs, but we don't have the channel fully established uh, for four months in this example here. Now, what you probably would be using is previous trend lines, but in this example that we're using, it's not established for a while. 
So once we establish the bottom of the channel and the top of the channel, here's where we're talking about the support and resistance. Scroll over a little bit. You can see here, now we're at the bottom of the channel. Uh, traditional traders will now use the top of the channel as our target as we reverse. We use the support of the channel and we come back up. And that works out. We basically come up and hit it a couple times. And this uh, S&P was so strong that we didn't actually come back down. Uh, we went right back up, came back down, went right back up again. Now what's interesting about this as we continue to look at this is a couple things. As we continue to go up and t not reach the bottom, but continue to go up and touch, the one time that we don't actually make it up to the top, what happens? We do crash down to the bottom, but the other thing that happens is that we don't really continue the strength of the market. And so once we do that, we're now out of the um, out of that channel and we're ready to identify a new one. So once we get here, you can see we enter this consolidation period of November to December. And that's very easily identified by connecting the wicks here. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot one right here. And then we're going to identify the low of that channel, looking at all these wicks. And we also have a nice wick over here that lines everything up. And so now we have this consolidation range for November to December. Again, our support and resistance, our targets as we go up and down. Once we break it, the great thing about support resistance is what? Once we go up, resistance now becomes support. We bounce there and go off again. And so uh, what's real important is, again, we still have our trend line from April coming up here. And look, even as we broke and not reaching the top, we still touched it and went back up, touched it, went back up touched it and went, went up from there and when we finally broke it here we broke down really hard not only did we break back down into this consolidation range but we made even a newer low and as we enter back in we went to the top became support again and we hit the top again and now we can draw another uh, channel and that's basically where we are right now so straight lines have great uh, advantages as far as support and resistance and identifying breakouts so hopefully you can see the advantage of straight channels. They give us specific targets that we can use. Um, they give us very great identifiers for support and resistance levels, and they help us identify breakouts. But there are other types of channels, and as we talked about before, the standard deviation channels. And there's basically four types that we're going to talk about. First and foremost, we have Bollinger Bands. They're probably the most popular form of technical in analysis indicators out there and the mo one of the most popular types of channels. Um, they're used primarily to determine overbought and oversold, very similar to the straight chain lines. But now we're starting to measure the volatility of the stock. And, and the bands are no longer straight. They now take fluidity. They now have shape. And um, we're going to take a look at an example of those in a moment. But the second type of deviation channel that we're going to look at are Keltner bands. And again, these also adapt to the change in the volatility of the stock. How many people are coming in and putting volume, buying the stock, up volume and down volume? That is volatility, the, the, the amount of interest that traders have in the stock. And again, just like uh, Bollinger Bands, we use these for overbought, oversold levels. And just like straight channels, we can signal price breakouts and look for extremes in the stock. Third, we have momentum bands. This was introduced by Dave Elliott, First Wave of WallStreetTraders.com. And it's basically a modification of Bollinger Bands, where we're now, instead of trying to capture the volatility within the bands, we're now trying to take advantage of uh, the breakouts outside of the bands. And again, I'll show you some examples, and we'll talk more specifically about those in part two of our video. And finally, we have linear regressions. And this is a statistical tool for forecasting future price, very similar to straight channels, except for, again, this has to do more with deviations than it does. Remember I said trend lines was about an art? Well, linear, regression, linear regressions is the science. And then just like the trend lines we looked before, they're primarily used as trend lines and for support and resistance. So that's in the part one of our video. Uh, we're going to actually show examples of our deviations in part two. As you guys know, who've been around with a while, we have a great futures trading room. You get a 10-day trial for $30.
if you're going to be trading futures we've got a great broker they have interday minis as low as three hundred dollars and if you sign up through us you get 20 free contracts and we have a great link both to the the three hundred dollar account and if you got a demo obviously we recommend that you pay for train we have a great charting platform for you to draw your trend lines and use your standard deviation uh, bands and we have a future trading plan to jumpstart your trading. So guys, I look forward to seeing you in part two.